Chicago Long Square Planning Board meeting. Thank you all for coming. Um, first on the agenda tonight, we have uh, proposed stormwater regulations relative to new construction. Um, there was an error on the agenda that said wastewater, but they actually are stormwater. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Rolo is going to present. So um, these are our um, uh, product of a stormwater group that met uh, last summer, I believe it was. Mr. Krebs was involved, the former chair of the planning board, Mr. Macklin, myself, uh, select board chair Hubert, um, Michael Appoint is a local engineer. I think if there's anyone else. And the and representatives from the Stratford Regional Planning Commission. Uh, basically, these are a response to um, our MS4 permitting that we uh, are required to maintain um, for the federal government because of uh, our proximity to the Salmon Falls River. And it, it spells out um, for new construction or any, uh, any project that can go to the planning board, either under site plan review or uh, subdivision regulation. So these are, for the most part, uh, more major projects. These aren't single-family homes. These are multi-family multi uh, developments. Um, and it spells out how um, stormwater is going to be discharged. It utilizes the... Um, The um, specifications and performance, or the manufacturing specifications and performance specifications, and the Hampshire Stormwater Management Manual Volume 2, which is dated 2008, or the most current recent revision, uh, which calls for certain techniques such as um, the development of uh, a moment, um, recessed vegetative landscaping. Um, rain gardens, um, different uh, types of uh, ditching so that um, storm water um, percolates back to the ground, isn't just out into the street and off to the river. Um, that's what the uh, uh, EPA and DES are trying to avoid. So well, with that, I'll be happy to take any questions either from the board or the the public. Does it differentiate between small projects and large ones? Is there an actual metric to measure them? Yes. John, maybe if you remember, John, you were part of the part of It's been so long I don't recall, but this, this meeting was supposed to have been held yes. <laughs> at least a year ago. At least a year ago, and then gets punted every single month because of scheduling difficulties. So. <coughs> Let me just try to find that for you. Sure. Kevin? Yeah, right in the beginning. So as I understand, like, if that is some sort of, refresh my memory, yeah. of all town, because of the MS4 regulations, because of our proximity to the St. Paul's River, mm -hmm. and typical of other New Hampshire towns, which also apply for such permitting of stormwater management. Um, We're all required to do this. And this isn't typical in line, if not identical, to other... Oh. Uh, no, we fine-tuned it to, to, to fix the wrongs, but, but yeah, I mean, the, the general gist is the same. I mean, it's, it's to divert water away from, uh, from, from rivers and lakes. So if you read the applicability of the very first page, well, the, the third page, it says that these, these uh, stormwater management standards apply to projects for grant planning board approval. Site plan approval of projects are requiring planning board approval, uh, planning board review under some of those regulations which create new roads or shared driveways. So, you know, just a front of subdivision wouldn't, wouldn't make, uh, you wouldn't apply to those. Site plans and anything with a road. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that reminder, John. So, the actual <coughs> number of, of properties, I guess it's running into the established number one. These are things we're already doing. Where well, well, so some well, of them are. So if you if you I happen to have this the site plan review regulations out, and the site plan review one of the questions I 
back up for Mike. And, and I, and I was, sadly, the woman who worked for Stratford that did this is no longer there. But we had asked her at one time to see to incorporate. These were written so they could be incorporated, incorporated into our regulations. Mm -hmm. If you look at our site plan review regulations on page 22, it's section 10 of the storm drains, which literally is a paragraph. In the subdivision regulations, it's on page, I think, 8 of the appendix. Page 8. And it's section 83, which is storm drain system. And there's about two, three pages. So really what I think is that um, I think that this will be adopted as a, as a new section 10 of the site plan review regulations. And either in whole or in part a replacement of section 83 uh, of the subject regulations. But I think that um, what I would recommend, Mike, is having um, civil consultants make sure, with regard to the subdivision regulations, make sure that the, we don't, I don't want to just replace it in whole, right. with, if there's something in here that they think should stay. I thought it was just an addendum, so it wasn't to replace, it was just an addendum at the end of section 8. For, eight However, you know, I think we have a, how, it, how it's inserted is a question that, you know, we can probably for the town here. Is that but I think, I think, I think, I think you can adopt it if there's, you know, there's no comment from the public that there are, if you decide that this, it works. And then in terms of how it's integrated into the site plan review regulations and, and, and subdivision regulations, I think we can bring that back um, uh, once we get input from the town engineer. And we talked about that at one time, so I guess it never happened. The um, well, we, we referred it to Trap Original, and um, I can't think of her name. Um, left, left. <laughs> I can't think of her name. So, yeah. And then Pat hunted month after month, and it fell off the radar. So until recently, again. Here we are again. Basically, it's, it's to protect the town um, from large, you know, large, um, large projects, so that um, runoff water doesn't run into, into the into uh, which would mean that they fine. <coughs> okay. But, <clears throat> but I think, I mean, I think it's the right thing to adopt. It's not protecting the town, per se. It's handling the fact that we are changing the landscape from natural to adding the impervious surfaces and roads mm -hmm. as such. So you want to manage properly and percolate back into the earth. But I think any time you're suggesting ch you know, changing any verbiage and existing as opposed to doing addendum, I think that's a that's a question that needs to be reviewed by Eagle as well. Because you're looking at an adopted policy, and if you're just going to swap in this, this newly written plan without that going to legal, I, I don't I don't I advise against that. But an addendum like as Mike had suggested. Yep. I, I think the problem with doing it as an addendum is that you're going to find inconsistencies with the two. Um, which is why we had at, we had talked about having the town engineer go through this and say, okay, in this case we can replace all of A3 with this. In this case it makes it, it probably makes sense. But I, I'm not an engineer and I don't I don't want to make that you know I, I don't want to make that recommendation to you. So um, I mean it's gone on for a year. Maybe I, I don't know if there's any urgency in doing this now, but you know maybe what it would make the most sense would be to have Jay Stevens Look at this uh, in comparison to this, what we have now in the site plan and the subdivision regs, mm -hmm. and come back to us with a recommendation as to how we do it, and then have a public hearing to amend both the subdivision and site plan regs by inserting this yeah. either whole or part. You know. And Jay was going to do that for us. I don't, again, I don't think it ever happened. Yeah. So. I'm certainly not suggesting circumvent engineering, right, as well as legal, but I, I agree with you there. Okay. But given the nature that it's, it's when this development is happening, I mean, I don't think it's a today thing, but it's, you know, you have to definitely need to keep an eye on The last thing we want to do is just muddy the water we've been trying to clean up for. Well, I th and I think, this is, I think this is good stuff. I mean, I, if I knew the woman's name, she, Liz, she worked hard on it. it, it this is, this is, a lot of this is just model language from other towns. But as Mike said, we spent six, seven months, I don't know, it was quite a while. 
So I'm making sure this was tailored to Rollinsburg, so it's not just, we just did this pull it off the shelf. We went through paragraph by paragraph and added and, and, and deleted. So it's, I think what you ended up with is pretty good, but how we <coughs> integrate it into our regs is, is, is probably, you know, for best handled by the entire engineer. Okay? Well, we're certainly having a public hearing tonight. Yes. And ask the public what they think about incorporating changes and then, um, <coughs> you know, at a, at a subsequent meeting, discuss how to um, incorporate and whether or not to adopt. <coughs> Anyone else on the board have a question or comment? Uh, at this point, I will open it up for public comment. And uh, before we do that, um, if people sitting in the audience can direct their questions to the chair um, and try to uh, eliminate any kind of crosstalk. Speaking one at a time would be appreciated. <clears throat> I don't hear any questions. Okay. I think people aren't really here for this. <laughs> <laughs> for this thrilling stormwater discussion. All right. Then we can close the public hearing. Um, I don't think um, there's a call for a vote at this moment. No. We have a motion before that, right? Okay. We have some time before the. Uh, yes, we do. Next week's panel, right? So, um, yeah. Why don't we tackle the rest of and take some items from the agenda out of order? Um, did we get minutes from the last meeting? We didn't get minutes. minutes. But, um, <coughs> So, no minutes. Um, correspondence, I didn't see any in there that was um, pertinent. Um, any other business to come before the board? So, the select board has a, a number of things we'd like the okay. uh, planning board to consider for the coming, uh, coming term. Um, the site review, um, the need to revise uh, driveway regulations. Also, uh, road design regulations. Um, we would suggest bringing in the police, fire, and road agent to discuss uh, updating road design regulations. Uh, this is something that was discussed last year. The meeting never happened. And um, I think John actually touched on this for our chair, but um, home business and home occupancy permitting for businesses, um, whether or not the planning board would keep a list of, um, of licensed businesses or that should be done through the town clerk, but having that discussion and whether or not um, the home business and or home occupancy um, sections need to be revised. Okay. There have been uh, at least one property in town people have had concerns with, uh, abutters have had concerns with on um, Pine Press Line, which is, oh, okay. we have to go to Gilbert to get to the summer to access. <laughs> So, from the top, are these items that we don't have to tackle tonight? Oh. We'd like to, we'd like them on your radar. Please. Okay. So, <coughs> is there one topic that you think we can we can tackle tonight? We only have fifteen no. minutes. No. Okay. <laughs> so, why don't we get them on the agenda for next? Well, this is what I'm saying. So, I, I think <coughs> especially in, in, in subsequent months, if we don't have um, other business, typically in. Um, <coughs> December and January, we start um, November. We start thinking about um, zoning yep. articles for uh, for the town warrant for March. So somebody just just sort of we we've been talking about the road standards for quite a long for quite a while, and because we don't get a lot of subdivision activity in Rollinsburg, it, it sort of rears its uh, head maybe every I don't know a couple of years. And I think the last time um, the planning board, uh, and I don't want to say butted heads, but maybe disagreed with the um, fire department was, maybe it was a Chinbrake subdivision? We, 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 I think we, it was an access road with a hammerhead versus right, a. Right, yes. versus Where was a, it? Okay. Yeah, there That's what a, they there did. There was a Gagnon <laughs> Hill. Uh, yeah, but, but the, 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 the point is that, you know, if, if this was, like, in the summer of the Dover where you're doing subdivisions every month, we, you know, it would be, you know, be, be fresh in everybody's 
in mind. But the issue, there's a couple of issues that have come up. One is, you know, roadway width. As a, as a board, we talked about trying to eliminate the amount of uh, impervious surface on sites. And that's been um, our desire to have narrower uh, roads has been a little bit inconsistent with uh, the wishes of the fire department. And then the other thing that we, as a board, or the you as a board, have talked about and and tried to do is is get away from paving giant cul-de-sacs. Mm -hmm. um, but it, again, that seems to be not well. Many towns seem to embrace them and, it, and prefer them. The, the fire department here is is not not wanting to wanting to go down that road. So literally, <laughs> or go around that road. So I, I think it's something you know worth meeting with them, and it may be even beyond meeting with them, bringing in someone from you know a, a, body, a, a fire fire service or a fire chief or someone from another department from another town, say how do these work in your town? Because a lot of it is just you know on paper they don't look great, um, and, and just see how they do it. Because again, you know the whole idea, and it sort of it, it ties to, it ties into the stormwater management right. Is that you know the less pavement and the less mm -hmm. surface we have, the easier it is to handle stormwater. So um, you're right, it was Gagnon was the last issue. Um, so at any rate, that you know that's that's sort of how it you know where this is how it comes <coughs> up. And it only happens every couple of years, but uh, I think it's worth. If we have a slow month, you know the problem is we need to be prepared to deal with it two three weeks early. Yeah. To get the chief in here. And right. I don't think police has ever really had an issue. It's always been fire. Mm -hmm. And the, well, the previous road agent, <coughs> our incoming road agent, I don't know, but you know, plowing issues with um, hammerhead versus cold sack right, versus right. water option. But I still think if we're talking about changing regs and we're talking, you know, forecasting our next six months or whatever until the town meets, <coughs> I think that's just a scheduling thing that we can discuss when we don't have. Yep. I understand that. Um, and it, it's, it does sound like it's sort of passing the buck, but it does need to be addressed. Okay, with regard to home occupations, I don't know. We've, we've had some discussions um, in the last couple of years about them. So I think, you know, at, at the very least, it, it, you know, maybe we spend a half an hour going through the right <coughs> and, and see do they, are, are they doing what we want them to do? Mm -hmm. you know, maybe it, maybe they, maybe there is a, a need for a, a change. But again, that's something you could do in a in a so we don't have a heavy. Yeah, you know, we can't get the fire chief in here with our, our new or the new road agent. We could always discuss that as a board. Oh. <clears throat> Things we're waiting for a slow month, and it hasn't happened in okay. a little bit. Um, the other thing that, and I don't know when they're doing it, but the state does um, mm -hmm. offer planning board training class uh, training um, opportunities, generally spring and fall. I don't know when they are this fall, but I would assume you're getting correspondence. No, I haven't seen anything. No, okay. but and they can be really good. So um, it's they, day long. Day long thing. So, yeah, I, I, uh, spring is typically uh, a day long on a Saturday. You know, maybe not day long, but you know, nine to four, nine to three, and almost day long. And then, um, and then throughout the year, they might have you know, uh, in the fall, they typically have like, um, sessions you know, either at night or at the weekend. So it might be. Uh, I'll look on the website and, and see when they are and, and distribute it to two miles. See if, if anybody on the board is interested in going. So, uh, and then you know, I, I had talked a few years, a long time ago about doing something with our town planning board attorney. Not sure who that is right now. Um, 
but uh, it paved the way for a slow, a slow month. So yeah. I talked to, I did talk to John Radigan, who's represented us before, mm -hmm. and he said he'd be willing to do it um, at no charge. But I'm not sure. I don't want to get him in here if he's not. I don't know if Steve Roberts is. I don't know who he's representing us now. So we don't have a whole lot of people. Steve Roberts is the, the town, but the planning board hasn't decided. We haven't had a meeting for. Uh, we haven't had a meeting. So. so. Is that and we asked Steve if he had an issue with it. He said no. He didn't have an issue. Yeah. I recall we reached out to Terry Madigan and did some research for a year. This last year we had a forward to the board. So. And he had prior to that too. Mm -hmm. Is that something we should have in place in case we need it, or, or just? I, 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 he assumes, I, I, having spoken with him quite a while ago, now, three, two, two months ago or three months ago, whenever I was asked uh, uh, to do it, he, he assumes that he's still representing you, but he knows it's a sleepy town. Yeah. Hey, just hey. if he doesn't get a phone call every month, doesn't mean that he's, you know. Uh, Discharge. So I, I think he's he's there for you if you need him. Um, so okay. I, you know, again, I don't know what I have no idea what November looks like. You know. It is hard not knowing. You know. uh, yeah. I don't, want, I don't want to schedule this, you know an hour right. training session and have find out we have four other items on the agenda and, and get bumped. Um, right. No, I so I, I agree. The, I think maybe the day, you know, the day after the deadline in October, it's there to let you know again. Yeah. You know, and then maybe we schedule that or we could do. So far, there's nothing on the agenda. I mean, I know it's very no, early. Um, Karen and I are having a discussion about the, um, the deadlines for applications because they're not being followed and it's kind of creating time changes. Right. For I know that we have to So, but there doesn't seem to be a centralized place where applicants can go and have like a checklist. Um, so that's something that she and I have talked about kind of yeah. together. Yeah. So also the the website when you go to the planning board website and there's a, there's a link that says applications. There's nothing there. It's literally. I don't think it brings you to a Google Drive too. with nothing. There. I don't think they're, they're, they're not. They're not. No one has them electronic. <laughs> no. This is, this is <laughs> so can someone put that in a Word doc? We can scan it. Um. Yeah. I'll talk to Carol about that. Um. And I'll get to you who posted. I, I don't know, would you have to get it approved by the board before you post it? Though? What's that? The yeah. amended application? The application is just the application. I mean, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't, unless you, if there's something wrong with you know, I use him. I don't pay great attention. I mean, they could be updated. I looked at Dover a couple of months ago to see maybe if we could just copy what they have. Theirs is like much more in-depth yeah. than ours. Yeah, it it's not, it's not, the, the, app, the application itself is not adopted by a public hearing. Okay. So, yeah, if you see something wrong with that, there's no reason you can't fix it. Okay, yeah, I mean, there's a couple of things on there. Well, it was tight. It's still at the top, so it's nice. Is zoning ordinance being on the website? Well, like, yeah. the I don't think it has. I, I tried to look into the other day. Oh, it was really this good. was yeah. on a typewriter. This was on a typewriter. For sure. Um, it looks like we're going to need a bunch more chairs. Um, yeah, if we can recess for a few moments. <coughs> and, uh, <laughs>
can turn it off. Oh, right. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> more minutes until we're actually at 7.30 and then we can uh, get started. we um, reconvene here. Um, the next up on the agenda is discussion of uh, subdivision of uh, 110 Rollins Road. So I just want to repeat for the people that weren't in the room before that <clears throat> if you can eliminate any kind of crosstalk that happens and direct all questions to the chair um, and also give your name and address when you speak. 
and uh, we, can, we can start the presentation. Before we start, I just want to say that because this matter could potentially come before the ZBA and I'm on the ZBA, I'm going to abstain from any discussion or participation or voting in regard to this uh, matter. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm saying I'm not going to be, I, I'm a member of the ZBA also, and because it's, it seems to me that um, potentially this could come before the ZBA in some shape or form, and, and maybe not, but I want to err on the side of caution, and I'm going to abstain from any participation, questioning, voting whatsoever. I'm just going to sit in this chair. Um, For the record, um, the applicant and I would not have an objection to you sitting on this as a planning board member, um, whereas we feel I think the only instance where this case could end up before the Zoning Board of Adjustment is under an appeal. There is nothing else requested in terms of the variance um, now or planned in the future. It's, it's out of an abundance of caution. I'm sorry? It's out of an abundance of caution. The abundance of caution. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And we have plenty of numbers to vote. So we have a quorum? Yes. Okay. All right, then. Um, for the record, my name is Paul Connolly. I am the civil engineer and land surveyor and here on behalf of Jason and Megan Lavoy, um, owners and applicants of the subdivision request. Um, I think by now you've seen the plans uh, for the subdivision. They have been in one shape or another in front of the board for about a year or better now. And simply what uh, is sought uh, um, by your approval is the division of their five acre track at 110 Rollins Road into two separate parcels, that being a uh, remaining parcel of roughly two acres plus on the corner of Rollins Road and Shady Lane, and then a proposed three acre lot on Shady Lane with uh, over uh, 200 feet of frontage. Um, along with our request that we have asked for of this board, we've asked for two waivers. Uh, one would be from the requirements to provide uh, his mapping, that's high intensity soil survey mapping, with this application, whereas we do have a soil uh, test uh, performed on both lots as part of this. And uh, the second request is for a waiver from section 9.15 of the subdivision regulations which uh, states, um, I'll, paraphrase, I'll, I'll paraphrase, that uh, subdivision is not allowed on a Class 6 highway. So with that, again, um, two proposed lots. Along with the two proposed lots is a, a proposed granting of a 10-foot wide strip of land owned by the boys adjacent to Shady Lane that would ultimately become, uh, in fee simple, part of Shady Lane, thereby allowing Shady Lane to have a full 50-foot uh, right-of-way width. And also proposed, along with the request, is the improvement of Shady Lane consistent with the recently adopted um, uh, policy by the Board of Selectmen relative to Class 6 highways and the issuance of building permits on same. Uh, basically, what is proposed is a 16-foot uh, wide um, um, gravel improvement to the existing shady lane with two-foot wide gravel shoulders on either side of that 16-foot wide gravel improvement. So basically, it ends up being a, about a 20-foot wide panel uh, of a gravel road. And that um, alignment, the horizontal alignment and the vertical alignment of that uh, improved gravel road would essentially take place along the existing alignment of the um, gravel path um, uh, now or formerly trod on uh, Shady Lane. Again, we have done <coughs> test pits on both the proposed lots, <coughs> the proposed lot and the remaining lot. Um, thereafter, we applied for um, and received subdivision approval from the State of New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services, um, and that subdivision approval is noted on the submitted plan set. 
it's a pretty simple request to the board. So um, rather than drone on about it or any further time, yeah. I'm going to open it for your questions. Yes. <clears throat> Members of the board, questions, comments? Uh, I'll open it up for a public hearing after after the board. So call so the, the, the roadway, the two foot um, uh, gravel buffer on either side. On uh, the Van Duver side of the of Shaving Lane, where would the, uh, you know, the missing on the map, but where would the uh, two foot buffer begin? It would basically uh, begin at the edge of the existing uh, uh, clearing along the, the edge of the existing pathway. So, uh, in other words, we, for the most part, hugged um, the existing edge um, along the Allen's land to the furthest extent possible and therefore proposed expansion of the width, um, whereas the existing width is roughly 10 to 12 feet. Um, expo propose the expansion of it towards the La Jolla parcel. So it shouldn't have, in fact, shouldn't affect the Van Duvers as either from both of them, or sorry, Paul or um, here. Now, it won't, it won't affect either of their properties then? No, it, it won't affect, it would not require any clearing along their, okay. their side of the road, if you will, um, it would not affect their property. Let me, can I just ask a question? Is this, is this a new application, or I would assume it is? This is a new application. So just to remind everybody, in, in terms of process, the way this works is that the first thing typically that the board does is review the application for completeness and make a determination if it's complete or not. <clears throat> and complete doesn't mean it's any good. It could all have submitted a horrible <laughs> drain analysis, but it's there. Yeah. So you say, yep, it's there. Part of that analysis is whether or not zoning is complied with before you accept it. So one of the things that I, I, we need to discuss is whether or not this complies with the zoning ordinance. And I don't know if you want to do that now or you want to open it up to the public and bring it back. Yeah, let's bring it back. Okay. Um, Kevin? In the 10 foot uh, portion along the boys' land, you're not proposing any addition or removal of any sort of natural vegetation that exists there and now. No, we're no not. changes of any of the, the topography or landscape in any of the existing on either side, other than what is needed for, for road improvement. That, that's correct. We're, we're not proposing any uh, change to that. And in fact, um, we, as shown on the plan, we sought to put the driveway entrance into the proposed lot in an existing cut in the trees. And we wouldn't have to even cut for the driveway. Any other my question? Okay. Not sure? No question. All right, let's open it up for um, public questions. And, and again, please, one at a time. Wow. I have one. Okay. Subdivision. Could you, could you just state your name and address, please? A piece of property. Alan, state your name. What's that? Say your name. name. Your Alan Van Duver, 84 Volunteer. Thank you. <coughs> no, it's all right. My hearing's not the best. Just so that everybody knows. What, what is your address? 84. The subdivision on Jason's property on Rollins Road is approximately 80 feet, I believe. How do you subdivide a piece of property on the road? That subject that doesn't have the frontage. I, I think that's something that we'll discuss. Okay. That's, that's, then the next question is the road itself. I believe you talked about 16 feet plus two each side for 20 feet. That doesn't bring it up to a class five status. <clears throat> I, I the road right. will still stay at six, the class six mm -hmm. road. Will this end up going to the ZBA first? These are these are excellent questions. Thank you for raising them. I, we, we don't know that yet. And then for this road to come up for a class five status, it has to be a second person, right? 
John, I'm going to defer that to you. No, I mean, you could have a class five road with uh, one house on it. Let me, let me rephrase the question. Can a second person build on this road that's being proposed the way it is, 16 plus 4? Well, it, it's a good question, and I don't have an answer. If it was a class 5, yes. If it was a class 6, then probably not. The same problem, probably right? not. Probably not. Probably not. So, in order for any of this to happen, this road has to be, an answer has to be brought up before. Everybody, but and everybody, correct? I'm, I'm not sure. I because there's a second person involved here and a possible third <coughs> involved that's coming. Guaranteed. That one you can take to the bank. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, th this is this is the process we're here to discuss. Um, so we won't know what happens before until anything has been put in here. I can tell you, there's a second one involved. There's I don't know what you mean involved. by second one. Second abutter. Five second abutter. Yes. Okay. To the road. And they're here. Yep. Okay. Let, let, let's have them uh, <clears throat> ask a question. There's your, there's your paperwork right there. That's, that's a letter of intent for subdivision off Shady Lane to subdivide. Oh, okay. 12 2. I totally misunderstood the, the question. Um, as long as the town is opening this road, then I'm a game player and there's possibly a third one coming. I get you. Now. So he's, he's saying he's interested in subdividing this land. Okay. Okay. That's a separate matter. I, I really appreciate okay. you bringing right. it to our attention. Just telling you what's coming. Yeah. All right? You'll have this officially later on in the week. Thank you very much. Are there any other in the back? Yeah. William Hammond, 64 Rollins Road. I just had a couple concerns of um, opening the road and closing the road. So if you can come in 600 feet off a Class 5 road from the new guidelines that were written, if you come in 600 feet, do you do bars and gates at that point? If an applicant comes in, as Mr. LaVoy wants to put the house out, when he's finished, you have a hammerhead there. I'm assuming it's a hammerhead. Is that a turnaround? At that point, can you close that road from the 600 feet all the way to Dover on this specific road? And I, I think Mr. may be confusing the planning board process and the guidelines that the select board has enacted mm -hmm. for issuing building permits. They're completely different processes. This board would need to grant a waiver to build at any frontage on a class six road with the ZBA go have to. The, the select board enacted policies in the event that there was a project like this or on Fresh Creek. Fresh Creek has been interest down there. And those guidelines are to to guide the select board on how to issue building permits. It has no effect on, on the process that this board uses make the determination. So the guidelines you're, you're citing okay. have no, um, they're, they're not, um, have no bearing. They're no bearing on, on, on this part of the process. So they, this board couldn't answer any of those questions. So you have no idea what these guidelines are as a planning board? They know what they are, but so, okay. but they're, they're a different piece of the process. So. Well, they're not, they're my, my concerns are, I don't care if Mr. LaVoy builds a hotel back there, goes in 600 feet, builds his hotel, and shuts the road right where he ends. The road is still shut. I understand that. It, it, but we're not it, moving the gates and bars. We would not be doing that. Neither okay. the planning board nor the select board. Okay. There would need to be a, an agreement, a memorandum of, of understanding, if this was all approved by the planning board. 
would then go to the select board, and the select board would then have to enter an agreement with, with in this case, the Lavoys, so they would understand what services would or would not be provided to them. Okay. Um, the road will not be maintained, it will not be plowed, they would be responsible for all of that. The road is still a class six road, the town is not going to maintain it, whether it's uh, Shady Lane, Fresh Creek, or any other class six road. So that part really is, doesn't change. So there wouldn't be, if we were changing it to a class five status, then we would be talking about hammerheads, cul-de-sacs, any other number of improvements. But well, even if you go up to a class six road, you still have to put some type of turnaround there. At 600 feet for emergency person for emergency vehicles to come in and turn around. The road would need to be sufficiently wide enough for emergency vehicle to get down. But again, that would be something we would be discussing <coughs> further in the process. You know. Okay, I, uh, I thought you, that that would come up tonight. Where if this was approved, could you take that in consideration? Where you could stop the road at 600 feet and then close it to foot traffic only. I can tell you that interest. regardless of what the planning board does, the planning board could say yes to 10 individuals of, uh, individual houses on Shady Lane. The select board has said as a policy, we will not issue building permits unless it meets certain specifications. So anything past 600 feet, you're not going to get a building permit from the current select board. Now the next select board in March can say yes, we'll give you one all the way up to Dover, I don't know. Right, but no. That's why when I read and so came only to that one person, other meeting, whoever is six hundred feet up, that would be whoever that is. There would only be allowed two houses, and after that, you would need to petition to have it be a class five road. Okay, one on either side of the road. So, yeah. thank you, John. You were going to say something. I was just going to simply say that that. that any road issue is not in the purview of the planning board. With, with regard to class six roads, that's all the board of selectmen. They lay them out, they allow construction or building permits on them. This this board has nothing to do with uh, how a class six road is used. All, all we're doing is deciding. But to your point, is there is there going to be a cul-de-sac on there? Or that, that's something the planning board can certainly consider. But the layout of the road, that's a select board issue. Right. And, yeah. My biggest concern is I abut Shady Lane. My house is the closest to Shady Lane. And the last thing I want to see is Oak Street behind my house. That's why I was asking if that's approved, could you shut that road down from that 600 feet beyond <coughs> in the future? Yeah. That was just my question. I, I guess I have to go to the select board yes. for that. <laughs> and I'm not trying to be rude. I don't want to. This we can't handle any of that here, but I can no, I tell you that, that yeah. as far as the current board is concerned, we don't want to see that become Oak Street Island. We want to share your concern. Now, in March, when the new select board, new, you know, different folks are on it, if there are different folks, they may not feel the same. But Tim, I just want to focus on the Lavoie project this discussion <coughs> and, and bring it back to scope here and yes, um, sir. move forward with the different applications you speak to complete. Yep. I'd like to respect the Lavoie's time and, and move forward on discussing this project right here right now. Public hearing is still open. Right? The public hearing is still open. <coughs> is there anyone else um, that would like to speak? I just have a quick question. Name, please. Celia Leopold, 426 Washington Street. Thank you. Um, and this is more directed towards the board about the process than um, when in this process does um, the project go before like emergency officials, the fire department and the police department and stuff to ensure adequate safety. There's been questions on the past about different roads not meeting the standards for the yep. fire trucks and so forth. I think when they would go to go building permit is, is when that would happen. So, further further down the process. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comment? Yeah, I assume we're still on the uh, uh, the uh, on the uh, project. We haven't started. No, no, no. no. Oh, we haven't done it yet. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> Sorry, that's what. That's it. Looked like it wasn't over yet. So. Great. Anyone else? All right. Uh, I'm going to close or. Yeah, close the public hearing at this point. I would suspend it. Yeah, okay. That way you can reopen it in the future if you want. Okay, yeah. continue the public yeah. hearing. Yeah. Okay. That sounds good. Um, so, the things on our to-do list 
or to review the application. Um, yeah, so so typically, for those of you guys that have all been around a long time, I would provide you a memo saying this is you know what's there. Um, I, I did not get these plans until I saw them. I got them emailed to me yesterday by you. Mm -hmm. So um, I haven't done that. I've done it in the past, um, but I don't think that's really an issue. The biggest issue for me is, and I would turn your attention if you have the plan in front of you, if you look at the lower left-hand corner, the zoning requirements section. This has been a hang-up that we've had for a long time. The, the frontage requirement is 200 feet. And, and frontage is defined as uh, frontage on a Class 5 highway or better. That not only does Lot 16-2 not have any frontage on a Class 5 highway, but we're now taking away 10 feet from a, from a, from a lot that doesn't have adequate frontage now. You're going from... I think 93 feet to uh, 83 feet, or I, I don't really know, the plan is unclear, but clearly there's not 200 feet. So uh, from day one, I, I, I've asserted that this thing, this, this subdivision needs to get a variance, two variances. One is for, to make a non-conforming lot more non-conforming, and then to create a lot that doesn't have any frontage at all. So I don't think you can, I don't think the board has any authority or jurisdiction to review this plan um, as proposed. I think if they got a variance, it's no problem. Mm -hmm. But I think those are the two variances that I need. So, I don't know if the planning board wants and if the will of the board of the planning board to waive section 9.15. Uh, 9.15. They could do that. Mm -hmm. and you can't make a, a non-conforming lot more non-conforming, though. Right, not with my own Oh, okay. <laughs> so so you, could, you could allow, though, for, for you would have 282 feet, it looks like. Along, along Shady Lane. So you could, this board potentially could waive that <coughs> section so they would be in compliance there. They would need a, you're suggesting then that they would need a variance from the ZBA on the Rollins Road side. So that's only, it's going to 93.53. The proposed frontage is 93.53, whereas the existing is 107.11. So it's a, a non-conforming, pre-existing. Yeah. If I could interject, create it long before it's on. Yes, please. Both the proposed lot and the remaining lot uh, number 16 will have more than 200 feet frontage on a street, on a highway, on a road. Um, in this case, it's just not a class five or better, it's a class six road. And furthermore, I don't think it's the intent of the recently adopted uh, policy by the select board relative to the issuance of building permits on a class six highway to impose or inject an applicant into a catch-22 situation. Okay? It does suggest in there, states and in the new policy, that where possible, a, a giving of land sufficient enough to make for a full right-of-way width for the subject Class 6 highway is highly suggested. And that's what we've done here. And that we haven't done that to put ourselves in jeopardy. Can I, I ask John a question? So John, if, if we, let's take out the Class 6 pickup for a moment. Let's just assume that both of these, pro these properties are side-by-side -side on Rollins Road. And one has 292.22, and one has 93.53. Well, the, you're suggesting we wouldn't we wouldn't be doing that either. Right? No, no. It, 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 if you're going to consider Shady Lane a town <coughs> road, then it eliminates the non-conforming of Lot 16, because now you've given it 444 feet. On the road. Now it's got now it's a corner lot, so it, that 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 would have ample frontage. Yeah, frontage on wrong road, frontage on shady lane, so that goes away. Um, 
and then you've got adequate punish here. The, the issue is that it's not a class five highway or better. And no, no, I understand that. What I'm saying is, if it were on a class five road, and the same situation were the same, 292, 95, we still wouldn't be doing it. You're suggesting it would, it would be creating a, even more non-conforming law. I could suggest a careful well, reading of well, the zoning ordinance. But what I'm, if this was, a, if this was, I, I think what you're saying is, this, if this is a class five highway, I'm saying flip that lot so it's next to. Just saying. So they were both on. If they were both on a class, they were both on Rollins Road. Let's just say. Yeah. <coughs> 292 feet on Rollins Road yeah. and 95 feet on. We were going from 107 to 95. Would you still be saying we should not be creating a non, even more non-conforming lot? Well, you don't have, or is it just the fact that it's on a class six? Well, you don't have the, the this, this planning board does not, you, you can't not grant a variance. By taking 10 feet away from the frontage on a class five highway, you, you're granting a variance. So, I don't know how you get over that hurdle. Okay, that's what I'm trying to understand. Okay. <clears throat> I, I don't know that it's a hurdle. If you read the definition of a, of a street, of a road, in a frontage in your zoning ordinance, you'll see that it does not speak to class five, class six, or whatever. It just talks about a street or a highway. Okay, thank you. Section 2.57, which is the definition of street, and section 4.4, which states that no building shall be erected except on a lot fronting on a street. Okay. We're back up to 2.57, which says street means a public road, public highway, or public thoroughfare, which constitutes or is designed to constitute the main access to more than one lot, and which has been or shall be shall be proposed to be legally dedicated and accepted for public use, which means all town construction specifications. So as such, we do have enough frontage on Shady Lane on the remaining lot and the other proposed lot. And certainly there is a reduction in the frontage along Rollins Road. But as such, that doesn't put you into a variant situation because you've added the frontage on J.D. Lane, if you haven't added it, it's, it's been there all along. Class 5 highway and built that way, then we wouldn't be even talking about this. 
but that's not the case. Or, or, or a road built to class five standards that could be accepted by the town. I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of, you know, the other, there's other <coughs> issues in that, in, that, in, that, in that is that the right of way isn't, you know, that would have to get, you, you'd have to be a party to that, the board of selects. Well, the, uh, to, to my way of thinking, if the, if the application doesn't meet the zoning orders, you can't accept it. It's, it's automatic. You have to deny it. If you don't, if you don't, um, if you question my opinion, um, and it would hurt my feeling, you could continue the application and, and seek, uh, you know, uh, an opinion from your attorney. I think you've got you've gotten it before, but I'm not positive. Yeah. What is the opinion from the attorney? I know that it's, it's I've seen it that. months and months ago, either a year or a year ago. It's, it's a, been a long time, but I don't think it was that long. Um, I haven't seen it in a long time. Mm -hmm. Still looking like no, no, it's fine. Okay. Um, so at this point, do we need a, a, a vote to continue with the application <clears throat> for legal review? It's a little odd that you haven't accepted it, um, but I would say, uh, yeah, continue the application for the November meeting, uh, seek and ask, you know, have, have attorney ready to review this plan, and at least we'll have an answer. One way or the other. Yeah, I, I I don't want to create more legal issues for the applicant um, by approving the plan. Um, I I think it makes sense to to have our lawyer, the town's lawyer, review it. But it also makes sense at this juncture to have the plans reviewed, um, perhaps by the board's agent, for completeness, so that issue can be. Yeah. Addressed, taking care of. I and there are no other issues, at least. Uh, I don't see any. I mean, I've done it before, but I don't see any issues. I mean, the, 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 as you said in your opening remarks, this is a pretty simple subject. It's, 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 it's unfortunately, um, you know, this the classic road is the, is the hiccup. Um, so I, I'm happy to do that, but I, I, I guess I would, you know, in an effort to 
sort of reduce you know, the cost of the review. I would rather just wait. If Attorney Redding can turn around and review quickly, I would wait until. Because if he says you got to get a variance, then I'd rather hold off. So, you say again? <clears throat> if, if, it's, if it's the opinion of Attorney Radigan that a variance is required, I'd rather hold off my review until you get that, just to save your client money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll do whatever you I'll do whatever you want. We already have that. that. That's already. Attorney Mike, Radigan's you already. have all of it's, that it's, already. It's, it was on plan side. revision yeah. zero. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was on the other one, and it had to go back to yeah. the select board for us to do that we did this revision because of attorney Radigan's comments and the select board has the authority to approve the variances it's in all of his correspondence we've already done that In the interest of time, I'm going to um, table this topic, and we'll pick it back up at the end of the meeting. Um, but our other at the end. Um, oh, okay. If it's, the letter says something contrary to okay. what we think, then we're just going to review it legally. Recess that the meeting for November. This is a, uh, this is a, uh, a copy of both uh, Chairman Macklin's email correspondence to Attorney Radigan, mm -hmm. and then Attorney Radigan's email report back to Chairman Macklin. Is it possible to copy that? Or? Yeah, I can make a copy right now. So, rather than things to okay, we vote to accept. Chairman, I would just uh, interject that I believe it is imperative that Attorney Radigan, if he's going to be solicited for another opinion, receive a copy of this most recent plan submitted to, to this board. Because every, every element and issue relative to land matters changes from plan to plan, and it really needs to be, the opinion has to be specific to what is in front of the board. Oh, absolutely. I think um, Caroline Lamoureux and, and perhaps Sarah have, and I, perhaps the whole board at this point has um, a PDF files of the plans and the supporting documentation also, so it should all be readily transmittable to uh, Attorney Radigan or Attorney Robertson, whoever the board chooses to, to engage. <coughs>
Construction standards ordinance section 4.4 states that no building shall be erected except on a street on a lot fronting a street. This means that the property owner would need a variance if the lot does not have compliant frontage on an access from a free public road, which this proposed back lot does not have. As this subdivision is proposed with frontage on Shady Lane and access on Rollins Road, the applicant will need a variance, never mind a waiver from the section 9.15 of the Planning Board subdivision. Regulations. He then goes on to find the right page. So I did seven copies for all of us here. And if our machine doesn't have any, you know, it's very frustrating. Um, okay. Um, one of the questions that was asked can the town legally approve a subdivision where the frontage of the lot is on a class six road? Answer. I have your question and where access is front on a roadway other than that of where the lot takes its frontage. If we examine together zoning ordinance section 4.4 and the definition of street and ordinance section 2.5 so the same as I think. Okay. Okay, thank you. Just seems like this. But the zoning ordinance requires that lots have access and frontage on a street that is a public road built to town standards and designed to be the main access to the lot. A class six road can be a public street, however. In this circumstance, the Class 6 road, Shady Lane, is not proposed to be how the lot takes its access, which was your other plan. So, uh, lot access is proposed to be from Rollins Road. And the zoning ordinance requires that the street shall provide both frontage and access. I do not believe the planning board can approve this lot without the applicant first obtaining a variance, but that was for the other one. So, I haven't finished reading the letter. So, but, but the first part seems to tell me that. I mean, I'm trying to get everything, all the pages for everybody, so. Two. I think copy that volume. It's from all the pages. I'm going to give it to John, so we can make that real quick. Sorry, Miles, I think you probably should have John. So. One, I mean, to me, it seems that on one part, it's moot because um, on the second part, it's not the same application, but um, the first part seems like it's still relevant. So, I don't want to, like I said, if this is going to move forward, I don't want to set the applicants up for, for failure because the planning board screwed something up. I mean, I, I, I think that we should, probably shouldn't focus on this letter because you're right. It does, it is based on a, on a uh, different plan. But I, I think if you, if you read the, the second, I'm sorry, page three of the email, um, 
talking. It's pretty clear if you read the first sentence, it answers the question number one. In a town meeting, who was other than the first one in the classic row? The answer is C. So, I, I, you know, I think we probably should get a, you know, an opinion on this plan, not on the old plan. But I think the answer to the question number one is going to be a Question two is a little bit changed now because there's, there's um, where they're dedicating land from the existing frontage to the, to the shady lane mm -hmm. So that's going to have a, that's going to change that answer. If you look at page three of the email, or page three on the bottom, the answer to question one is exactly what we're talking about. Right. That's what I Question two is a little bit moved now because they changed the way it's, it's laid out. Um, Three is the issue. So, so I, I really think if you focus on the answer to question one, the answer is in this, that, you know, in your turn of in your turn of opinion, the answer is no. So in this case, we are providing frontage and access. On a class six road. So again, the parameters, the variables have all changed. To the, the board to step forward in motion to take the next action here. I think the most valuable thing we could have is an opinion on this very plan as submitted. I think that's that's the key piece of information. I mean, you're right, this is, this is a change on the plans, and I'd like to read an opinion on this plan. Um, I agree with that. Again, do we need a motion and a vote to make that happen? I would make a motion. Well, let's talk about something else. I mean, who, are we paying? Who's paying the legal fees? Are we? Are we have the um, Have the fees been paid for this application? Yes, they have. Okay. So our, I don't know. Is it our response? I, I, that's a question I don't know the answer to. I mean, do you want to pay or do you want to pay? Um, I believe the package has to be the line for legal fees with yeah. for, for issues. So then I would, I would just, I guess if you're going to make a motion, I would do two things. You've got to continue this application to the November meeting, mm -hmm. and continue the public hearing, um, and then you know, <coughs> to, to you, you're directing, uh, you want you want Attorney Radigan to review the most current plan, whatever it's stated. Yeah. Um, I've got a copy that I can, a large scale copy. That, that's the PDF print. Yeah. As well, so I'll, I can I can I can mail the large size or hand deliver the large plan. If that's easy. <coughs> and then I'll uh, I'll review the plan once we get. I'll talk to you about that. Okay. I guess you can direct me to do this. I've got it all. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Want one for your final one, Sure. Miles, may I speak for a moment, sure. please? Can you so, just take your name? Yes, my name is Lloyd Winston Mom. Um, so, can you explain to me the, the if, I don't care, fine, send it to your legal review for, I don't know, the 15th time in two years at this point. But can we talk a little bit about what the next steps are and what the process would be? Because I'm going to be polite in saying that it changes 
with every meeting that happens between the planning board and the select board, we are told something different every time we go to a meeting. Um, and I've got to tell you, um, you guys were submitted all of this stuff on June 12th. For John to say, and the whole thing of not being on the agenda for tonight originally was because, do we have the digital thing for John? Nobody asked for that until the deadline of the meeting to say that you needed that. There's zero proactiveness out of this board, and I need to understand what's the process going to be because all we do is table it month to month and switch it from board to board. Okay, <clears throat> I'm not trying to make your life more difficult at all. Let me just say that to start with. I'm trying to do what's right for the town. Um, this is a volunteer position. I'm not sure if you're aware of that. I am. Um, so the next step is we're going to get it reviewed. So if we approve tonight and you you go off and get a building permit and get sued, <clears throat> I, I don't want that to happen. I understand that. I'm asking you, as the chairman of the board, what is the next step in the process? Board, board sure, let, please. Let me, let me respond because Miles is, is, is a little new with this. Um, in, in terms of... I'll take it on two roads. The first road is that our attorney says that he concurs with with your with, with Paul Conley's position that there's no variance required. Mm -hmm. If the planning board agrees with that opinion, I would assume they would. I have no no reason to believe they wouldn't agree with their own attorney. Then I think that we would just review this as it were any other subdivision and and potentially be in a position in November to you know act on the application. If the attorney comes back and says, um, I believe that a variance is required because, they, because the, the plan is creating a lot with inadequate frontage on a class five highway, then um, you would have to go to the zoning board and get a variance, uh, and potentially two variances for the two lots that you're, you know, the, making the front, the front lot smaller in terms of front and then, and then for the back lot. If you got that variance, which you probably, and I don't know what the schedule is, I'm assuming you would not get that before the November meeting. Um, the, the planning board would have to continue the November meeting until, say, December, until that until you either got the variance or you were denied. At, at, you know, and if you got the variance, the, ultimately the planning board could act on your application. If you didn't get it, then we couldn't. There's nothing we can do. Is that? I mean, is that a fair? That, that's, um, I think that's about. That's how the process. So, how, what is the process of when you guys get the response back from the attorney? on are you going to surprise us in the November meeting or will we know prior? Will we get an email? Um, I'd like to think that we would share, I mean, I don't know. It's, I, uh, I, I'm not an attorney, so I can't answer that. I'm assuming, uh, I, I'm afraid to answer it incorrectly. I think we would um, share those responses with upon receipt. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not saying we share it. I don't know why we would surprise you or hold it back. Or, you know, I would think that as soon as we have a written response, we would forward it to you. Unless for some reason the attorney said that, you know, he wants you to review it first. But I, I don't I don't know how I don't even know what that letter said, but you know, if there's an attorney client for privilege statement on it or not. So I, I don't so I, I unless unless there was a reason he didn't want us to share it, I would I would assume we'd share it right away. Okay, and my last question, and Mike, this might be for you. So it started out with Attorney Radigan, and with the select board, we just went to Attorney Roberts. So where is this going? Well, so it's frustrating, and I'm sorry. No, but there's two different parts of the process. So Roberts was handling the building permit section. Okay. So John Radigan's a land use um, attorney, so he would handle all the planning issues. So it's. It keeps, okay. And there's uh, a reason Robert would be, just would be part. The difference so, between yeah. the two. Most towns don't want to have the same attorney representing the board of selectmen and the planning board in cases an appeal of something. So okay. generally, they, and that's why we split. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Okay. So, okay. Well, let's just say, best case scenario, Attorney Radigan gets the response back in by the end of next year. Sarah, what's the, what's the, you do the scheduling for the, ZBA, what's the ZBA turnaround? Is the same thing. It's there. 20 days. It's 20 days. Yes. So, you have to give us 20 days in order to submit application and notice. So, when is that, though? Did you meet as needed? Or yes, needed? as so. needed. Ad hoc basis. So, by statute, the ZBA is, is uh, impelled to act within 30 days of the submission of an application. So, tonight's Tuesday. If we had an answer by Friday, 
I mean, is it? Assuming that everybody, the other thing is that it's you assumes that everybody can attend a meeting because it's not a regular schedule. I'm just asking, should I push them, push them to make a... I mean, to be honest with you, you should. It should go to December. No, saying? no, I was asking, should I push, oh. <laughs> push Attorney Redding into make, make a, to have a written opinion by Friday? Um, this week. In order to, to make to, a In order to expedite, well, I, I'm just thinking, if he says a variance is required, mm -hmm. I'd like to see if we could get the LaVoy's into the ZBA before the November planning board meeting so we don't have to continue again. That's what I'm asking. Is there any, if, if I mean, how urgent can, I, I have no idea. I, I'm not seeing things move very urgently with ZBA, to be quite honest. Okay, is it within the 30 days, though? We've never had that issue. Okay. Um, so I'm not, in my experience with the ZBA, so I'm okay. not sure. Okay. That's not an issue. Yeah. Case. Last time we appeared before the ZBA, it took about 65 days before um, getting a meeting, but it was primarily due to the fact that all members couldn't attend, so it yeah. was somewhat of a moot. Uh, but they were responsive to that call. It wasn't like they waited 65 days, right, to respond to you? No, no, no. Got we, we were in constant contact, okay. but it was a matter of the, the, the convenience of the, the board to con convene. Okay. Um, no, I mean, you know, we, we could have taken a hard line on that and challenged it through the selectmen. Um, but then, you know, that brings forth a whole different, yeah, lengthy process, and we decided, you know, we'll just wait for the board to get to a date that they can meet. And you know, we came before the board, and we met with them. Yeah. With the same day. So you think that if you do the schedule on the job, the chair, you think best case scenario, realistically, is December? I do. So regardless of well, I mean, I, I think it's fair to be asking because they've been at this a long time to continue to November, and if we can't, you know, well, I don't want to promise something that's not, not going to happen. Yeah, exactly. Well, we, like we I said, know. in my experience, we've never had to like schedule something tight. So I don't. Well, we don't know what the don't we, don't what the, don't we, the, don't we don't know what the attorney's opinion is going to be. Maybe right. we're making a mud out of a mold. So I, I guess I would continue to November. Well, I'll, I'll do the very best I can to push him to, to get a written opinion uh, as soon as possible. And let's see what let's see what he says. I think he, the, when he when was it 2006 last year when we asked him the questions the turnaround was what the hell? forty days. It took him forty days to respond. Yeah, um, June 21 was when uh, Chairman Macklin sent out his email request, and the response came back July 27. Well, this was well, it's July, July. We will certainly try to speed things along. This was July, dated though two weeks later, so I don't. Know. Second. This this one is dated two weeks later though. This was July five, where and then okay. this was ordered from Pat on June thirtieth. If we asked him on the twenty first, I mean. Is yeah. he Pat something up on the twenty first? John replied on the twenty seventh. Seems like six months. Well, it's, it's, it's here and there, really. Right, but I'm going to ask him. I'll tell him that this is work. It's just meeting up time, frankly. Okay, can I can I get the motions that that? So a motion to continue. So uh, you don't really need a motion to send it to the legal counsel. No, we already know. I guess a motion to continue the public hearing and the application to November, whatever it is. Seven. Seven. We'll make that motion. Is that election day? No, yeah. no, not in this town. No. There's no election in this town. There isn't? Okay. No. Just the city. Second. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstain? Abstain. All right. Motion passes. Um, we will try our very best to get you back here in November and get you... All right. Does anyone need a break? Or we get to break into the next session?
to the site would be uh, parking. So right now this is existing parking and you can see we, we would be adding uh, spaces over here so that's additional parking. And then in the back it's currently gravel but we were going to uh, propose this pavement so this would be um, parking that would uh, be added so that the new use would have ample parking. The engineer could be here tonight if he can come uh, next meeting. He uh, had to go down to Houston uh, to deal with the uh, flooding down there. So he's actually, uh, he was supposed to be here, but uh, he got called out for that. Um, special so. circumstances, so. Um, but he will have additional, uh, he'll have all the engineering specifications for the drainage and um, landscape plan, blah, 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 blah. You know, all the other parts of the application that weren't complete. So, um, you know, for people in the um, public portion, if they could make it to the next meeting and you had specific questions about the engineering, that would be uh, the time to come. I can try to answer. I just came to, to basically tell the public what the site is going to look like and what the changes are and what we're proposing. Um, so that would be site changes. Uh, we, we've already done the solar, but that's existing. So the site changes would be parking. Uh, this parking exists, but we're going to expand that. Um, and then obviously the addition would be the um, to the building for uh, a stairway. Currently, that's the site. The other um, this is this is on the main street side of this of the building. So this would be the new uh, stairwell proposed, and then we were going to uh, put two new entrances on the main street side of the building. The grade would actually drop down on this corner four feet, uh, so that we could have two um, glass entrances and uh, more headroom on the first floor. Uh, so the site would actually come down a little bit, so you wouldn't have that um, kind of the hill. We'd be taking out part of the hill, so that would be more of a flat entrance. It would just kind of soften up the entrance and make it a little more uh, inviting, a little more accessible to the street uh, so that you don't have that big uh, kind of sloping mass of uh, land that, you know, this uh, currently there's a landscape berm here that would actually come down so it would kind of make the site a little bit less imposing. Um, that, that's the main street side, which is pretty much what everybody sees. I think the rest of it, uh, nobody really looks at the back of, of the site, but that's basically what the back of the building is going to look like, pretty much as it is now, other than a new entrance. This would be the residential entrance, so basically all the residential tenants would be parking in the back of the site, and they would use this entrance. 
and pretty much the main street part of the site would be more commercial uh, because it's a mixed use uh, proposal. So we try to keep the commercial on the main street side where the commercial activity is and then keep the residential in the back. And, uh, that's the plan. I think the rest is just uh, floor plans. Mm -hmm. Which you guys probably aren't concerned with. That's just floor plans for the for use. So basically, um, I'll leave it on the site plan because that's super, what people generally focus on. Um, so basically, this is the um, the development of the site. We have maintained the seven and a half foot setback on the parking. Um, we've these this engineering will come in. This is just a proposal of retention pond, swale, and then obviously, um, you know, managing the water, but that would all be to engineering specifications. Um, so uh, all that, um, those calculations will be presented. Uh, basically, as soon as it gets back from Houston, I'll get those to you guys uh, probably within a week, I would say, hopefully. He said he would have that done as soon as he gets back. So you'll get um, all the calculations on the drainage. Um, and I was going to have him obviously add the landscaping, but I was going to try to get uh, you know, some feedback from you, uh, the board or the public, on landscaping suggestions. Um, and anything else, obviously, that's part of the application. So I'll just leave it on the site plan. and, and uh, Anybody have any questions? Yeah, we'll start with our board here. John, you have a game. Yeah, go back and I'll and I'll add, if you guys can talk about it. I've got just some questions for Jeff that you could write down a plan and you could have your engineer yeah, address. Totally. Yeah, minor stuff, but I'll. Unless you want me to do it nope, now. Nope. Um, just, so just to be clear, all access. So the residential parking will be through Railroad Avenue, exactly, exclusively, and yeah. in front it will be accessed off the existing curb cut. That is, although it will be a great change, yep, will be accessed off the Main Street. But that front will be designated purely for res for the res yes. uh, for the commercial tenants, the, commercial the retail tenant. tenants. Yeah. So and basically, no, so that front lot would be empty during non-business hours if, if there indeed was no shut, no retail yeah. space open. <clears throat> After hours, so totally, yeah. I think the, the first two floors are 100% commercial, mm -hmm. and then the third floor is like a mixed um, use you'll see on the blueprints. So basically, there might be a few tenants back here that are on the third floor, yep. commercial, but it's it's kind of like half and half. But the, f the first two floors are totally dedicated for commercial or retail, and so that, that would be this lot. So yeah, it wouldn't be used in, in the evening. And can you just touch base on what your lighting plans are, or whether just some ideas you're doing for lighting? Well, the lighting and back. Yeah, the lighting we were gonna do. Um, we were gonna do building lighting and try to suffice. But obviously, if if the projection doesn't make it, then we would put um, something out here. But I would put it out here and point it back because um, you know the the residential area is here. So if, if it was necessary to do the fill uh, on the lighting, then obviously we would probably put it here and then have it point back towards the building. And on the rear lot? On the rear lot, uh, right now we actually have lighting on the building and it fills this whole area. So uh, the only question would be this part out here, which would probably be two, two street lights and they would, they would shoot this way. So basically, um, Probably two. I think we're covered here because the building's so high. The building's 40 feet. So right now we've got pretty much coverage uh, with what we have. Uh, and then here we would probably add two lights. Uh, but to tell you the truth, this is uh, Mid Construction owns this, and it's all wooded, and there's no uh, development here. So I don't think I would get a neighbor complaint here because you know the houses are here, and this is all tree lined. You know, this is the water tower a lot. So, if the board wanted, I could do the lighting on the railroad side. Um, pretty much whatever the board really um, 
would like to see, I'd be glad to do as far as um, lighting on this portion. I think we can cover it with, with building lighting here. Um, I could probably cover it with building lighting here because on this side the building is actually 60 feet high. But if it was uh, not in, you know, accordance with the liking of the board, and obviously I could do lighting here, shoot it back um, in that direction. So that's. Because the street lights. Give me a quick rundown as far as residential density in this building, as far as um, per floor. You said the first two floors being retail or, or commercial, and then there's three additional floors which would be purely residential, correct? Yeah, the top three floors we're going to do residential. Um, so there would be six six apartments per floor, so there would be 18 apartments. And then uh, on the third floor, there is one handicapped apartment just to make the building ADA compliant. So that's 19. So and I think we not putting an elevator in, correct? It's just a stairwell. Uh, no, stairwell. the stairwell is a code compliant stairwell. And then uh, we've got an existing stairwell here, so that gives us our two egresses. Um, there's a freight elevator in the building, but obviously we can't use that. If somebody wanted to, they could. Uh, technically, it's just for freight. So, um, so with the ADA compliant apartment, that's uh, gets it to 19, but uh, the floors are so big that actually six apartments, the layout actually worked. The, the average um, size of the apartment is like 900 square feet, and they're all one bedrooms. Do you have any commercial tenants in there currently? Uh, no, there's no tenants. Speaking. So, is there any activity going on inside? Uh, we. Any kind of any kind of building or renovation going on inside? Oh yeah, we're just doing yeah. Uh, Lots of activity. Yeah, we're cleaning Hello. it out, basically, yeah. Cleaning it out. I've got a permit to do the roof, demo, and some structural stuff to it. So I'm still working on that permit. Okay, so it is just demolition? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't done anything, uh, okay. any fit up yet. We're still uh, tearing at it. If I can be very... So, I have a question about the... The grade of the parking lot before the, um, you know, the commercial, and maybe I missed it in your presentation. I apologize if I did. When the applicant came in informally last time, he talked about, I thought he talked about lowering the entire grade of the parking lot, and I'm not sure if this if you're still intending to do that or not. Well, yeah, what it was is um, if you look at the parking lot right now, yeah. that's a pretty dramatic slope, right? And all the water kind of goes into this guy's yard. Yeah. So we were going to flatten it out. And so basically, this is the high point. Hmm. So take take the high point out. So go down four feet and then just make it flat. All right. Now if you, when you did that, so where does then the water go? I mean, is it in other words, isn't it going to stay in the parking lot? Yeah. No, it would stay in. Obviously, they do want they retain it. So the the engineer will design the system. And this is like a can't remember if he's got a 2% on here or what, but it'll all go to a 2% and then he's got a, there'll be a drain that'll all hit the drain. And when so, you bring the, so right now when you when you leave the parking lot, as I walk by and look at it, there's a bit of a lip when it enters the road. Will there be any um, sight line problems? In other words, if you're down four feet. Well, no, no, right now it's up, actually. Well, I know, I know but you're saying you're going to take it down. Yeah. So when it going to increase the... No, no, it would be level if not above the road. If you look at it, right now you, you drive up right. the entrance. So basically, right now when you come down, you're, you're going down a hill. So now it would just be more level. So, so you wouldn't be going down that hill before you hit the road. This is actually raised above the road. I know the, the lip is, okay. Yeah. So, so again, just so I can understand this, so right, right now you're saying if you could pull in there and go over the lip, you go up. Yeah, yeah, saying? right, exactly. And so when you do the grade, when you go with the lip, what happens? You'll just be going straight. It'll be okay. more level. Okay. All yeah. Right. Um, so the engineer can actually uh, speak to that. When he, I mean, as far as how he's going to tweak that, how he's going to yep. uh, make this transition, because this is a hill, as you know. Yep. So he's got to um, mitigate that uh, transition right here. So. Now, if I want to drive by tonight after the meeting and look at the, the lighting out back. Is it possible, again, that you could mimic the lighting out back in terms of lighting out front if it's sufficient right now. You said it's 40, uh, 40 in the back, 60 in the front. I don't think you'd want that. Yeah, it's 
Because it'd be too dark, you're saying? No, it'd be too, yeah, it would be, uh, you wouldn't want spotlights in there. Okay, I just, I just didn't know what kind of lighting there was. Yeah, they're, the beginning. they're full on spot. They were there okay. when I bought the building. They're just full on spots because, you know, I don't have any neighbors here. And I've got solar, a solar array here, so it's all pretty all right. much screened. Right, so you but came I would never before. do that to the I'm other. sorry if I'm misinterested. You came in before. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry if I, if I didn't recognize you. I apologize. Yeah, um, I, w I wouldn't do that to, to right. the neighbors, but, um, I mean, if I can, but I... I'm well, no, no, I'm just, I just thought I'd drive by tonight, and where you said before the lighting it back was adequate, I thought, well, please, maybe I'll t t take a drive by and see what it looks like. Um, yeah, it's pretty dark. I mean, even the lights on the back are, aren't even working now. It's, the, the site's pretty dark, but... Um, but this seems to work, and I don't really have any butter <coughs> here. I think I would do something a little bit more, um, you know, low key, just to kind of right. keep, keep the yeah. lighting. The light pushes is a concern. Yeah. So that actually, um, what we'll, we're going to have on the next plan as far as how we, how we deal with that uh, lighting. Two other quick question. I won't take up too much of the board's time. Is, is there anything of historical significance inside the building? Like, um, is the freight elevator? Is that like? You know, seventy-five years old. Is there, is yeah. there anything that historical that could be preserved? in the age of the building, but I, I'm guessing it's late eighteen hundreds. Yeah. So yeah, there's not. I mean, we're saving everything because that's what I do. Okay. But uh, I don't think anything has any historical significance. All right. Um, but and is out the board is any interest or not? I, I always love walking through a site. Um, would you be open to maybe me in my own time or or? or if the board would do a site walk, walking through the building and seeing what we Oh, absolutely, yeah. Oh, sure, yeah. All right, thank you. Yep, no problem. Anyone else? <laughs> well, why don't we get a public comment and then... Uh, uh, question. I just want to get Jeff until somebody comes back. He's got a, that's oh, yeah, so totally. It's a minor stuff. Short list. Let's open it up to uh, public comment. And again, one at a time, state your name, speak clearly. He's good grammar. <laughs> I, I, I know the woman on the front has a... <laughs> I'm going to grant you thank you for comments. Go ahead. Sure, I've got uh, a few that hopefully can answer without the engineer. Brian Pellerin to Ross Road. Thank you. I first one is actually a comment more than a question. Are you sure that the existing site plan is accurate? Uh, back in 2011, Carter Family Properties and blew in, I altered the um, uh, altered the two lots, uh, their lot and our lot 50, where our parking lot is. Yeah. I I didn't because I only got access to these plans today. I didn't have time to pull our copy. But if I remember right, you've actually got more land than you're showing there on your plans. You know, that's a good question. I actually Brian, you, Brian can you show? Because I can't remember that. Can you point that? I, I can't remember that. Can you show us yeah. where it is? This, if this I could recall, be my favorite. Yes, actually. <laughs> if I recall wow. correctly, I, this right of way was wiped out. That's and right. This border was moved here, so that this concrete slab and additional parking was uh, inside the Bluen property. So yeah, I thought that was strange that that was on your property. Paul, Paul did that, didn't he? No, I did. Oh, no, no, no. I think Paul Adam Connell. did it. Atlantic no, Survey. No, Paul Conley did it. He represented. You. I want to say. I want to say. He right. came to the planning board. Like so I said, you should talk to his office because I only got Brian's right. Yeah, because today, so um, I don't have time to pull out. Yeah, records. well, you're right. civil consultants, mm -hmm. yeah. So no, works. civil so works. But Paul Conley, it was just here. Oh, civil works. Okay, yeah, yeah because yeah, yeah. Um, Brian's right. Because I actually found some of the pins on your property, Brian. Yeah. And it was Atlantic Survey. Well, Paul's not. Adam, that would have been the uh, the older. Uh, okay, yeah, because I used uh, him. Right. That's what I was thinking. They probably just went back to the plans that they had. Okay, that's a good point because I used yeah. Atlantic Survey because I saw his pins and I figured, well, he did the survey, but then the plan. Yeah, so I'll call Adam. Yeah, I guess. we don't record site plans, so there is a good chance that that plan has never, has never been recorded. Right. Um, and, and sometimes we don't record subdivisions. So, um, yeah. I would call, and Paul Conley, he, even though he's a land surveyor, a lot of times he doesn't do his own work, he subs it out, and he may have subbed that out. 
I well, I got um, actually got the plan from Civil Works originally. When I bought the property, I went to Civil Works, and okay. they gave me a plan, and they said, this is what we've done. Well, I'm just saying, that it, d don't tell Adam Fogg to run to the registry, because there was a fairly good chance that whatever lot lines we moved yeah, are recorded. <laughs> totally, and, and you're right, and I'm glad you brought it up, Ryan, because I think what Adam did is he just went on NewHampshireDeeds.com yeah. or whatever, got his information, so if it's not recorded... And you, or the other thing is, so to start with Paul, if he can't help you out, the only thing we could do is let you in. Uh, we could, I, I suppose we could go through our files, but yeah. I don't think they're very good either. So right. hopefully Paul has not I know it was Paul Conley that did it. Okay, well I'll talk to him because I did get a plan from Civil Works and actually matched up with this plan. And then Adam came up with us, uh, you know, a licensed surveyor, so I'm thinking, all right, so I got two people. It's probably not his fault. Yeah. But totally. So, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, Alright, second, second issue, I, that says that you've got 52 parking spaces, I, which seems, if I remember correctly, 52 and 4 of 52, yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that seems a little short for what you're proposing with the 19 apartments and the 17,000 square feet of commercial space. Okay, so I think the parking is two per apartment, right? So yeah, that's two 38. Two per apartment, so that's 38. And then we got the 14 handicap. additional, which means one parking spot for every 1,250 square feet of. Yeah, and that's space, actually, I'm glad you brought that up because there's no regs for commercial. Uh, I, I read through the zoning, and for com there's no requirement for parking for commercial in the regs. I couldn't, I couldn't find it anywhere, so we were just trying to come up with something that was reasonable. Um, but yet, have you said, have you seen I'm 90% certain that there is. That's the, there is, Brian. I want to say... Okay, that, I, I didn't see it anywhere. I want to say even if you're doing it as a warehouse, it's like a one per thousand square feet. Yeah. For, uh, for office, so. it's actually a lot denser than that. I forget where Rollins started. I know uh, Portsmouth is one for every 150 square feet of office space. Yeah, yeah, most towns are at 250 or in that range, but I, yeah. I didn't see anything, so we didn't really know how to handle that, but that's, a, that's an excellent question. And particularly if you're thinking of putting any kind of retail, I mean, I mean that front lot is not going to handle much in the way of customers. Right, well, I'm limited on the front, because obviously, like, I've added this. Oh, absolutely. But, but I mean, if you've got enough you know, parking in the back to handle Yeah, the and I can get it such. in the back, totally, you're right, because... Because the way I've designed the building is this entrance is third floor, but you could actually walk down, right. get to the uh, second floor, and then you... Yeah, that, uh, the existing plan and the seeming shortage of parking are the only two things that weren't related to drainage, so I'll save the rest of my questions for when you're... Yeah, talk to you here. Totally. Get yourself so a copy of the site plan review, right? Yeah. It's oh, one, it's in the site One for 200. Oh, okay. For retail. Okay. And well... And what is it for lead industrial? Yeah, what's it for uh, industrial rounds? How many space for employee? <laughs> Light industrial. For one uh, industrial is, well, one per employee or one per, one per thousand. Okay, so what about um, office? A medical office is one per employee, three per doctor. Office, one per 250. Okay, one per 250, I guess. So, yeah. So we'll just have to come up with an average because we don't know the use because we don't have a tenant. So. But I think we got it out back. Like I think we have the space. Yeah. So yeah. downstairs. Oh, oh sorry, it's a public area part. Brian, passing the call. I. The call has been done. Go ahead. Is there a hand in the back? Yep. Steve Ballant, 412 Railroad Avenue. Uh, you're going to be paving the back parking lot. Is that going to join the pavement of Railroad Avenue? Uh. Because it was my understanding, Railroad Avenue extended all the way almost to the tracks. And part of that is dirt. Yeah, no, I think the pavement right now stops here. Yep. So we were just going to, I was going to keep the pavement on my property. So there's going to be a dirt patch between Railroad Avenue and your property? Probably, yeah. Okay. And I also had a question about, Railroad Avenue is in pretty rough shape from when Bloons was in there. They're constantly filling potholes by the manhole and with the amount of traffic that we're expecting there, wondering if any improvements were going to be made to Rayward Avenue. It's kind of a narrow street, and currently there aren't any small children around there. 
now. Right. But there are tenants around. Uh, I'm a permanent resident there, but there are rent properties there that could easily have children in it. I'm just concerned about that street. It's difficult for two cars to pass each other. Um, so I'm just wondering if any improvements would be made to that street, because uh, I can see that as being a hindrance. Uh, the only other concern I really had was the parking lot lighting, because if it's extended out to the edge of your property, it's going to be shining right into my bedroom windows in my house. So I would be interested to see either how that's mitigated or the way you design your lighting to make sure that it doesn't come in there. Because we do have a street light, but I do have trees blocking that. And so if you get something of a high intensity to cover a large area, that might bleed over. And I haven't had an opportunity to actually see the lighting on the back of your building lit to see how much that is. I don't know, have you, is it working right now? The uh, well, it was, and then I just disconnected it the other day, but I, can, I mean, I can, okay. I can I, temporarily I really haven't it. noticed it, but I yeah. don't, it's, but it's going to be on all night, right? Well, I was doing it for security, because I had a lot of vandalism. Yeah. So, it doesn't have to stay, I think once tenants are there, then I won't have security problems, but right now I get a lot of vandals. Yep. I've got a lot of damage, and break-ins, and and stuff. Yeah, I know, because I see the little gang running around there. Yeah, oh yeah, there's a gang. So. Yeah, I tracked them down, but, yeah. but they're, uh, hopefully that's it, like hopefully that's, I solved yeah. the problem, but. You also but had it, some damage to some of your solar panels, I understand. Oh yeah, they did a lot of damage. They broke my solar array, they stole a lot of tools, yeah. broke windows. We did call the police one time, Ooh, by the time they so. arrived. They got there fairly quick. By the time they arrived, they were scattered. Oh, yeah, they moved yeah, quick. We have a perennial problem <laughs> with people climbing the water tanks. Oh, really? As soon as I see that, I call the cops right away because someone's going to die yeah. for that. Yeah. There's it also like an fun. open well behind the water tanks that's uh, probably about, I don't know, six feet. It's covered with some rotted boards. Right. Um, someone's going to fall through that, too. Yeah, it's not a good site. Yeah. So, where are you on railroad out? Uh, on the side or the uh, side? Well, I'm the only house on Railroad Avenue, on the Gray House. The New Englander. Oh, so you're driving side. up the, the brown chain link fence. Oh, okay. Okay, if you have your left, it's so your left. left. Okay, yeah. yeah. So basically, if I was, what I was proposing for lighting would be this side, mm -hmm. and then all the lighting would face, you know, this direction. Mm -hmm. And obviously, it's down lighting. I mean, so, I, you know, if it, so if it gets to be an issue, I'll certainly let you know how okay. you can make adjustments to it. So, yeah. But the pavement of the road not meeting Railroad Avenue and Railroad Avenue's condition in general are two, probably two of my major concerns. Yeah, I mean, we could pave it, but I don't like to pave town stuff. No, no, but I just meant that you know, Railroad so. Avenue is going to end, but on, from what I understand from plans, it actually extends through the gravel portion to where it meets BNM's property. It does, it goes straight up, yeah. And exactly. then you would be starting your, so every day, your tenants or whoever are going to have to drive through that dirt patch right. to get there. Yeah, good point. So, But you're right, this is all gravel, this is my property line, so I just showed yeah. to my property. That's what I was kind of posing the question is, were any, was there going to be any kind of mitigation of that uh, in terms of the town's response? So, uh, Aside from that, I'm sure I can stop by and see you when you're working and ask any yeah, specific questions. Much. So thanks for your awesome. time. Thank you. Yeah. Your question. Where is this open well? <laughs> so you familiar with where the pump house is underneath yeah. there? Yeah. Well, if you walk around the back side of it towards the Bloom's building, you'll see a like a meter head sticking up or a valve head. Okay. And then there's an area where there's actually it's an opening in there. Just level to the ground. It's yeah. It's kind of under some undergrowth. So if you're not watching, if like if you're walking around at night, you're going to probably hit it. Okay. And then you look down there, and I don't know how deep it actually goes. You can see a bottom. It's probably about four to six feet down below it. Yeah, we actually cleaned that up. We, there was yeah, a bunch did. of trash. We actually cleaned that couches all out. Couches and a bunch yeah, of stuff. Yeah, couches. You I see took, the new additions that they took? I took there? three loads of uh, trash yeah. out of there. Is that right? on your property? No, I just oh. did it okay. because I had to look at it. But okay. there was yeah. a lot of garbage. And it was really weird because it was like over by the well, and it was sketchy. So we got all the trash out of there, but I didn't right. want to mess with the well. No. Right. I know what you're talking it's about. It's not your responsibility, but yeah, that's 
That's only been that way for like 25 years. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for yep. letting me know that. All right, any other public comments? Celia Leopold, 426 Washington Street. You had said when you came before that you were going to lease um, an area in the addition with the stairwell for a possible elevator. Is that still on the plans? Is there going to be like an elevator? Uh, no, we took that out uh, because we decided if we ever do a, a elevator, we can use the, um, the existing shaft. Just take the freight elevator out because it's pretty old. So it would actually make more sense financially and just kind of for the design of the building just to use because the freight elevators, you know, once you go residential, it doesn't get used as much. So we could obviously um, transition that if we ever had to. But at this point, we don't need to do it because we've uh, put the access on the third level. You only have to go up three flights of stairs, you know, maximum. So it's doable. But if you start down here, you would, I mean, you, you know, you burn a lot of calories, but six flights of stairs is a lot. So, I shouldn't move furniture. Yeah, <laughs> and trying to move, right. So we, we've tried to uh, mitigate that. So, but yeah, we took that out because we were like just trying to de over design. And we decided it wasn't worth it. So. Um. On your lights that you were just talking about in the rear parking lot, is there vegetation on the opposite end of the parking lot? Um, not where your solar array is, but in that area there. Oh, here? Yeah, along there's the no, no, there's nothing here. This is well, actually, there is some uh, shrubbery, like, uh, but it's owned by the railroad, okay. so there's some stuff that's growing up. I don't know how they maintain their buffer, but um, this is my property line. Uh, here. So we'll probably, when we redo the parking calcs, we'll probably have to put spaces in here. So okay. this will probably all be taken up, but um, there's some, if you if you walk over there, check it out, but there's some stuff here that will grow bigger. Right now it's probably only about seven feet high. I'm um, just also wondering about the street light that's on Church Street, across from the church and across from the streets that let out on Church Street if that would affect your lighting or not. So. Yeah, I think my, my lighting, I'm going to try to focus this and try to fill this whole area with my lighting. Um, so I don't think there's any street lights on Railroad Ave right now. Right? There is. Oh, there is one? Yep. Okay. So I probably won't gain anything from that, but <coughs> the, is that at the end of the road or like near your house? It's. Um it's right along my property. Oh, okay. It's probably even with the edge of your property. Oh, okay. So if you drive by it, just so driving by, you see it. It's on the left hand side. Somewhere. Yeah, so somewhere in here, then there's, there's a street light. So I would be adding lighting here, and there wouldn't be any lighting added back here. Okay. Now, on Main Street, on the front parking lot, would you need to add lighting? Have you looked at what's available for lighting through the town on uh, the. Um, Street lights? I'd like to not add lighting because I'm not a big lighting fan. But um, if I could utilize the street lights, but a, a lot of um, towns don't let you do that. They require you do your own lighting on site. So I, we'll have to look at that when the engineer looks at the lighting. Um, so yeah, this, this we haven't really addressed yet. I kind of intuitively kind of know what I have to do back here, and the engineer will show it on the plan, but here. He's going to have to take a, like, do some calculations. <coughs> I mean, I'd love to use this, the lights that are already there. I don't have to pay for them. It would be great. But What about um, landscaping? Have you done a landscaping plan yet or not yet? No, he's going to show that. I think the landscape areas are going to be here, which is currently that's going to stay, uh, which is right now it's a mess, but that will be landscaped by the road. And then uh, this island will be landscaped just to, to break up the parking lot. Um, on Brian's um, border here, that he's got trees that line this whole section, so that probably will get landscape. And then there's trees that line around by the railroad. Actually, there's a good amount of vegetation along the railroad. Um, and then here, mid construction lot is all wooded. So I think the primary areas we'll be looking at is in front of the building and by the uh, main street. And then um, any islands that we create in the parking area, we, we landscape the trees. 
in your um, commercial space, are you planning to have any restaurants or commercial kitchens? Uh, I'm not. Mm -hmm. But obviously, if a tenant comes in, you know, that's, uh, it's hard to build for commercial tenants. Uh, it's, residential is real easy, you know, because I can make an apartment, but to do a commercial fit up, uh, usually you just end up chasing your tail. So you, you provide open space, and then the tenant usually comes in and they fit, fit up their own space, at, you know, as per their needs. So that would be based on who comes to the table, and I wish I knew. <laughs> on the back right now, you have an exterior staircase on the same side where you're proposing the indoor enclosed staircase. Are you going to take off the existing fire staircase that's there? No, that's going to stay, um, but it won't be a fire escape. Okay. But it will just be like a probably patio area for, for those apartments. But uh, no, the code um, allows us, as long as we provide two egresses, then the code allows us to use interior staircases, so that's what we'll probably be doing those two. And I think my other question, um, well, I have a comment, is that um, there is a cut through um, that people in my neighborhood, Church Street, Washington Street, use to cut across the railroad tracks to get onto Railroad Ave. Yes, right here. And then come into town. So you might see some people coming through there. And is there going to be any? But it sort of leads me to a question. Is there going to be any stop sign or anything um, at the corner of your property for the, all those people coming in and out of the um, parking lot? Uh, no. Okay. No. Uh, but I have noticed the traffic uh, cutting across there. It's a yeah. pretty good amount of... Um, they go to the store, I guess, and then they go into town. Yeah. yeah. Basically what happens. And then yeah. this is more for the... Um, board than for you, but um, with Railroad Ave being so narrow is and the increased traffic, would it be up to this board or the select board to maybe consider no parking like it was enforced in other areas? Of town? Um, I'm sorry, I'm thinking about the illegal trespassing on railroad property going across. <laughs> yes. You get hit by a train. Um, yes. What do you want to know? The select board. Yeah. Uh, Tommy answered my yeah. question. Park, parking on railroad avenue. That's a that's a select. Yeah, we would determine that, but I don't think you should be crossing the railroad. <laughs> 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 that's the hell of a Any any other public comment? Questions? Alrighty. Oh. Charlie Dale, forty four Rollinson. I just want to know if you had any formal meetings with the water and sewer with this plan to see if they can handle the water and sewer for 19 apartments and commercial. Uh, yeah, the, the building, actually when I bought it, it was, um, it was all commercial. There was 55 employees in the building. So I should probably get a credit for that because they're all gone. So the building was occupied when I bought it. I actually leased it back to Blue and Company for about uh, 12 months. But Blue and left, so now it's vacant. Um, but you're correct, I'm adding uh, residential, which it wasn't before, it was all commercial. Um, and I did go to a meeting with the sewer department, the sewer water department. I spoke with the head engineer, and he said there's no problem with capacity. I have to pay a, a fee, actually, uh, to the town of Rollinsford. Pretty substantial fee, but I have to pay per apartment. Uh, but capacity was not an issue, okay. for, according to their engineer. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay. So, are we back with us now? Mm, yes. Your engineer is coming next month. We're going to hold this over then until next month. Yes, that's the yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. We'll have all the uh, other stuff. Then I have a question about snow removal, that sort of stuff. And then, but water yep. mitigation, that's all going to be. Yeah, you'll get all the water okay. counts, um, uh, lighting, landscaping. So, we're going to suspend the public hearing until next month um, and continue. Can I just give Jeff some comments just so I would yep. go to the next one? Yep, Ben. Yep, I'm going to write around the plan. So, um, one thing that would be really helpful, Jeff, is an overall site plan because it's hard to tell, you know, where um, you're, you're gaining access. There's really no driveway shown. So, just an overall plan, maybe showing Railroad Avenue so we all know. 
I got you here. Just blow it up a little bit, you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Um, my second comment is truck access, how you can get, you know, delivery trucks in and out of here. I, I just don't want them getting, I don't want the select on getting complaints that you're backing trucks in right. off of Main Street. So, I, I don't know where you're going to do it or how you're going to do it or if you're going to do it, but I right. guess, you know, somehow you got to figure that out. Well, Bullen was there for... Uh, and I don't know how they worked. They went so, around the back to the Railroad Avenue. Yeah. Like, so, yeah just, so if you live on that street, you got to wait till the truck pulls. I can't believe they did that for years because those truck drivers, the ones I've well, had, you'll have a lot less, ditched. I mean... You'll have a lot less truck traffic. I just... all I'm, Yeah, totally. You know, I, I'm just asking a question, you know, where do... You know, like in the front parking lot, it's really, really tight. So where does right. FedEx or UPS, how do they get in and out of it? That's, okay. that's a question. And it may mean shortening up that center turn out, that center parking lot aisle in the front area right. so that you can make you can make that <coughs> space on that. You see what I'm saying, Jeff? Okay, you which, are you talking about the front? Yeah, I, and I can't, I can't, under, I don't understand your plan. Um, you've got a line going across your stair, you know. You got a line going across here, and I don't know what it is. Is that like a planting bed or something? That's the existing this, parking lot. This line, right? Okay. So as long as they can get you know around like that, you right? Know, with a with a reasonable size box truck. Just well, if you look at my elevations, I've got a overhead door here, which I put in this alleyway. So okay. Well, just have your you just you know, make sure that you, you know because the last one I did was cause a problem. Right. Totally. Um, there's a there's a over on the le left in the, in the in the landscape area. There's a gravel driveway and it says C Note Seven. See that right off of Main Street. Here. Right there. There's no Note Seven. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so I, I just want to know what it is. That's all. That's and maybe it's going away. So that's cool. Um, that's that's my, the um, we already talked about lighting, but have the engineer just give us a photometric plan showing yeah. what the light levels are, um, so that we know there's no light spilling off the property. It is uh, obviously in the back lot is where we care the most. Um, if you could add the setbacks around the lot lines, the, the, the zoning setbacks, just with the dash line. Yeah, for the building. Yeah. Okay. Just just have them go around the whole lot. Yeah. So we make sure there's no setback issues. But not not a parking setback because he's just put the parking. Just a structural setback. Okay. Yeah. yeah. My final comment is if you could dimension the parking spaces between them, like if you look in the, well, it's easier for me to see. It would be really nice to have like you know, 24 feet in between here, there, and there, and the same thing there okay, and there. So you can back in and out, you know. Just to mention those aisles. It's not the parking spaces, but the aisles. So, so it's, you know. My final comment is oh, uh, two more comments. One is can you have them add a chart with a parking calc on it by use? Uh, okay, so it's not good just to listen. Well, he's got it. He's got it there. It's his proposed parking space. So what I want is a is a table, okay. say like eighteen yeah. apartments times two units, thirty. Gotcha. Okay. I can't do math. Thirty-six, yeah. um, and then X number of office space at two, at at two fifty a square feet is X number of spaces. That way, I'll know if you need a waiver or if you're compliant. So everything's on the site plan regs as far as the parking. It's, it's in the site plan review regs. Okay. It's a simple I table. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why. And then my final comment is, over on the left, uh, go down to Main Street, go up about 75 feet, you see a stairway going down into... Yeah, oh yeah. That's is there an easement for that? or what? I just, I'm always worried about, I mean, <laughs> encouraging people to use somebody else's property. Yeah. I don't even want to get into it. Okay, okay. <laughs> but it is what it is. It's like the guy, I mean... Okay. Well, I don't know. I guess we don't care. It's just, it's I'm good now, but obviously the... This guy has a problem. I mean, it's this is my land. Right, right. So well, he has an easement, but that doesn't an easement doesn't mean you can park. Uh, what do you have an easement for, oh, for? For what? That's his driveway. Oh, that is yeah. I mean, it's been that way. It's Lewin, would Lewin's legal department send him a letter every four years or whatever, just saying, okay, you're parking there, but just so you know, it's our property. You know what I mean? Just just to avoid that adverse possession, little glitch. Okay. But I really don't even know how to resolve that. I mean, I, I don't. I didn't yeah, want to get I, into I, it. I, it's your problem, not ours. Yeah. <laughs> I was just. Yeah. Curious. <laughs> that's all I had. So. But my final comment is: if you want to, if you're trying to move <coughs> me kill more, if you're trying to move oh, well, expeditiously, yeah. if you're yeah. engineer, if if you can get me these. Paid full size paper copies, you know, a week or two before the meeting. Oh, totally, yeah. Th then I can review, you know, it's hard for me when I get up at night in the meeting. He's going to get those. As soon as okay. he's back from Houston, yeah. he's on it. Yeah. So 
But I'm glad Brennan came because I don't want him throwing the water at this if it's the, the wrong, wrong yeah. survey. Yeah. Because obviously they got to pay for it twice. So I got to get that resolved. It was a whole, there was a whole bunch of lot line adjustments down. Oh, it was wacky, yeah. 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 So do you you don't have a survey or? Oh, I do, but. I just got access to these plans today, so oh, okay. I don't have time to pull anything. Well, maybe, if you don't mind, maybe I'll give you a call and yep. see what you got, because that would be helpful. If I could give that to Adam. Because yep. I've already talked to Civil Works, but obviously I didn't hire him, so it's probably a different uh, arrangement. So, um, But yeah, that'd be great if you don't mind. Yeah, I might be able to go back to my electronic file to see if I have something good. I, I would doubt it. It was a while ago. Yeah. Because I know this was purchased from the railroad and there was a swap right. of you. Yeah. yeah. Kind of all went down the same time. All right. What, what was your address again? I didn't catch it. Mine? Yeah. 412 Railroad Avenue. Okay. Thank you. It used so to be the, number uh, one Railroad Avenue before. Florida Is that. Right. Um, do you have specific specs on that? No, all these, all, if you've never seen a photometric plan, it's pretty No, simple. I have, but I usually get them through the electrical Well, you don't need to pay for it. All he's going to do is, is have a show of light fixture here. And right, and show the light, Yeah, and, yeah. and, 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 and it will tell us what the light levels are. Really yeah. what we want is zero at the lot line. Right, so, you know, so it's got the numbers. All you got to do is have the, the light manufacturer. I think he can handle that. Well, the lighting manufacturer is going to provide it for you. So all you need to yeah, know. well, that's a different problem, but maybe I'll find out from the engineer if he I'm works sure they, with somebody, yeah. and then it's easier, you know. Right. I'm sure they've used, yeah. or he's probably used light fixtures before that you can use this, you know, steel. That's steel what steel we're probably going to do, yeah, because it's all cool. LED now. So that's what we do. And then the landscaping requirements, is that in the site plan? Yeah, it's, a, it's nice. Like, it probably isn't going to apply to you because this is an existing building, but, you know, I would say try to adhere as strictly as you can, you know. Right. Yeah, I wanted to put it on the plan, you know. Well, yeah, I just think you, you know, I, I, you probably aren't going to be able to meet the, uh, be able to meet the strict regulations because obviously everything's already there. Right. Right. New construction will be different. It'll be different. Yeah. So, okay. Well, I'm just going to throw some stuff on the plan. So yeah. If you can avoid planting trees under power lines. Yeah. I don't have that problem. I think in the front I'm just going to do like sea grass, and we're going to get into trees. The trees will be all back. So. I mean, that's not going to grow out over the site. Solar array. Right. right. Like we've had in the past. You didn't create it, but we have it up and down Main Street. So. Oh, I've seen it. Yeah, when I bought the building, it was actually yeah, uh, took over weeds and yeah. bushes in the sidewalk, so yeah. everybody walked around. Yeah. The section. Main Street. Yeah. I appreciate you fixing that. I think I had Tony uh, clean that up for you. <laughs> appreciate that. <laughs> so I could stay on the sidewalk. Yeah. Do we need a motion? Yes. We need a motion to continue to November 7th. November 7th, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion. All right. So we have a second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, none. So this, uh, this will be continued on our next uh, meeting, November 7th. Oh, hey, I don't know who's putting the agenda to see whether it is you or Sarah, but you probably should be careful about putting times on like we did so if, if, if it's the first applicant that will put down as you want your air for the process of the one board. I don't know, but it makes sense. Great. How do you usually do it today? I don't know. I don't like it. Did they make a motion to adjourn? No. Yeah. I know. Well, actually, we would be like, you know, I had right. the town. I the I the I the I I but I'm going like more than the I'm just hoping that that's not an issue like traffic in motion to adjourn. So, you know, in favor? Yeah. Or a couple of years. And I want to just process. Oh, I know. That was a nice little bug though. Oh, it was in the but you know, obviously still some new stickers on the car. Totally go through it. But so um Trying yeah, to see, and with that, that so of course, we need a, a song yeah, right up there for the first yeah, 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 and things. So I was just yeah, trying to get yeah, the ball bouncing or some kind of insight of 
Because I wasn't one to sell it. Karis is old. Okay, so you get that. Yeah. I'm going to trade the point chicken and people. Is there a present automotive garage there? No, no. But we, we've been doing, I've been doing work on this. Uh, okay. This construction oh, okay. stuff. Oh, okay. Oh, is it where the old school ones? Which ones are like the. You should be a landscape. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you see this like one name. It's further up. I was in the home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The closer to the gun that way. You're closer to Rollins, right? I got you. Yeah, okay. Is it commercial or is it commercial? Is it commercial or is it commercial? Hey, it might have been the original URL. Yeah, I'm not sure. 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 Commercially for a long time. Well, I've had my I had my landscape in there for 12 years, and then Brian. Well, I wonder if I could chat with Justice. Oh sure, yeah. I mean, he's doing a little Robin construction there also. Oh, awesome. And we have been yeah. so it doesn't sound like it's a change of trust. I I don't know. Just what was there? I mean, you you probably what 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 is the state telling you? you need? Well, the state, um, I need so, approvals uh, from, yeah, from the town to work out there. We can do automotive work, and then we need to sign it. I would start with the village inspector and, and see if, if he's willing to give you a hill issue assigned by the I would propose it. I'm, I'm not, a, I love yeah, it. It's a bit of a change for that. But I just um, know that maybe you don't know, get a permit to do it. Well, we all don't know anybody with any sense. I would start with Tom Clay. But anyway, I was wondering if maybe you could see your landscape. Are you going to come to the select board? Oh, yeah. We'll start with the plan. If you had a, you know, input. We meet every Monday night. If you told me the landscape is coming one day all um, is it okay. so around? Oh, yeah, I got to find out. A year ago, uh, Charlie very from uh, Site Structures. Thank you. But, so I'll find out if it's better off and take a look. plan for you. Have to do a building but, permit um, for a sign. Yeah. The thing with Charlie is okay. if I don't hire him, he charges me for the plan. Yeah. But if I hire him, yeah. we got him here for all yeah. the smoke. Yeah, right. Yeah. I don't blame him. Yeah. But I will find out. Well, I, 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 I